Hello and welcome to my Vintage Audio File channel. This is now video number 27. Today I'm going to do a review on the Sony CDP-C535 multi-disc compact disc player. It was uh, produced uh, about 1993. It was one of their top of the line models back then for consumers. It, the 500 series was a kind of an unusual series in their line in that it included something that none of their other players had and that was a home basically what you could call a home theater um, setting on it so that you could uh, play things in surround um, I never quite really got why they did that but I have a feeling they're they're uh, intent was for people who listened with headphones could be able to hear their music and surround sound it didn't really matter much to have the surround sound back in 93 on your cd player because by that time surround sound receivers were quite prevalent on the market um, but it does work and uh, if you do listen to headphones it is definitely a viable option um, it has a five different settings you can do one is hall there's a church setting there's a jazz club setting a stadium setting and a dance setting and you can either turn them on or you can turn them off depending upon what your preference is um, I will turn this on right now but you see that it is indeed working I will start up this disc one. I got five discs loaded as you can see. And per, per uh, the CDs of that time, they were much faster in loading and playing than they, their counterparts of the 80s, uh, which sometimes took a few seconds to, to load and play. Um, it does have uh, disc skip, an open and close button like your normal ones, and it also has what they call disc exchange, which was at that time kind of a newer phenomenon. Later on it became a lot more standard, and that was basically when you were playing a disc, it, the disc would uh, go up into the transport so that you could push this and change out the other four discs if you wanted to and that offered a lot of convenience for somebody who uh, <coughs> basically was going to be playing a CD and after a while decided well maybe I don't want to play that CD after a while they could change it without shutting the whole, whole machine down and restarting it up again as far as uh, you know playing it and uh, it also has its standard buttons that all CDs players pretty much have with your pause and play, stop, fast forward, reverse, and then your skip forward and reverse. But it also has a lot of buttons on here that you don't normally see on your standard five disc CD player. It has, of course, here's your buttons for pushing in the individual discs one through five. It has a continue, shuffle, and program button for um, doing those various items, plus a repeat button so that you can repeat e either a song or a whole CD. It does have the one through 10 button so that you can instantly access a certain track on a CD. If the CD has more than 10 tracks, you can push another button button to uh, basically do higher. It has a clear button on uh, here's your times 10 button so that it would uh, come up saying uh, 10 plus the one would be 11, that type of thing. It also has here a check button, an edit time and fade button, a fader 
uh, time button which basically tells you uh, that what's on that CD or how much is left on that track or how much is left on the CD itself. It has a peak search so that you can uh, which comes in handy if you're recording to another CD player or a cassette deck which were still fairly popular at the time and a music scan which will allow you to uh, scan either five or ten seconds of each song on a disc and then uh, advance to the next song in case you forgot what the song that you really like on a CD is you can do that without having to uh, keep pushing buttons it although it would take a little longer if you got a long disc um, it's not one of those functions I would normally use but uh, some people do it has a master erase button to erase uh, uh, all the uh, functions that you've uh, programmed in a file button and a level file over here you've got your uh, the DSP mode right now it's on direct so that's playing just normal two channel if you want to get into the DSP mode you'd hit this and then you're able to go to the different functions of uh, what type of uh, mode you'd like your, your surround sound to sound like. Right now I am in uh, dance mode. And if uh, you want to get out of the disc you're playing, you can either access it directly here or if you just want to go to the next disc same simple push of a button and it will automatically start playing the second disc and it's that just that simple uh, the player is in really good shape uh, for something that's almost 30 years old it works great one other thing you might see over here with the little red is it has a uh, volume control to control your headphones but at the same time this player has two sets of RCA's on the back one is called uh, direct and the other one is called uh, or should I say fixed and the other one's called variable uh, fixed one is your standard one that you would just have plugged into your uh, back of your receiver but um, if you wanted to be able to change the volume of your CD player so that you weren't over peaking like say a uh, cassette you were recording and uh, you didn't want to monkey with the cassette player recordings you could have it plugged into the variable and then you can change the output of the CD player the same way you would use to change the volume of your headphones uh, be anywhere being down to almost nothing to normal and then to twice as basically twice as much uh, volume that is something I never really played with much either but it is something that works wonders when you're uh, listening to the headphones because uh, it's nice to be able to control how much volume is in your headphones so that you don't you know blow your eardrums out there are some of the normal ones that don't have that feature that do get quite loud um, I don't recommend listening to headphones with those because they are quite loud but having this variable volume function does work wonders and it makes the system all that much better now this one says that it has a high density linear converter with a digital server system that's just a lot of technical mumbo jumbo basically just saying that it has a really good um, transport and uh, laser system in it so that you ex is able to extract all the music that's on your disk it has uh, signal noise ratios and and uh, stuff like that 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 some people are really 
wowed by that are in excess of 100 decibels and it also has a signal to noise ratio of 0 0.0035 which is basically something that makes it makes inaudible though the more higher your total harmonic distortion is the uh, more background hiss you're going to hear through your uh, receiver or through your headphones and that's just uh, an indication of uh, the quality of this particular one. 1% uh, 1 is considered maximum that you would want to ever have because then it becomes very disturbing to the music. Um, most things out there are produced that are less than that 1% which is good but this one is 0 0.0035 which means it's whisper quiet. If you turn up the uh, volume all the way on your headphones when you're not listening to anything, it'll be dead quiet. And that uh, is good because it doesn't allow any distortion into your uh, listening and makes it all that much more enjoyable. Uh, it's no fun listening to a background hiss um, distorting the uh, sound of what you're trying to listen to. And as far as uh, everything else that's considered on this one, it is, on, like I say, on the back, except for that extra RCA jack, it's all pretty much standard stuff on there. Only thing back there really is your labels and, and your uh, power cord. Um, but all the bells and whistles are on the front where they should be. And um, this one is a keeper. They had... Uh, I believe four or five different models of this type of uh, surround sound receiver that they made each year um, coming out with a different model starting around 1990 they had uh, the 515, the 525, the 535 and the 545. Um, I don't believe they had anything higher than that but it was the 500 series that had this particular um, phenomenon known as your surround sound. Just I'm going to put this back on direct so it gets rid of the DSP on there. And um, uh, there isn't too much else to tell you about this model except uh, it is highly recommended by me. It has a really good uh, sound quality and if you can find one for cheap um, don't hesitate to get it um, there are some better models out there but they are usually the ES line models which are the elevated standard series which are out of reach of a lot of people's pockets even today they are still very much sought after and uh, they will put you back quite a bit of money and I don't think you're gonna find those uh, too cheaply on the used market or at a thrift store or anything like that unless you're extremely lucky um, but these are still available um, and uh, with the CDs starting to fall out of favor they are getting a little bit more reasonable priced you can get one of these like this uh, like on some of the auction sites for around 25 30 40 dollars which isn't bad considering originally they pro probably cost upwards of close to $500 because of all the features that were on them. And uh, if you are looking for something that is a good CD player that uh, is an all around CD player that will get play anything and everything and get you other features that you don't normally see on other CD players, this would definitely be a line of CD players to look at. Um, and with that, I will uh, sign off. And please like this video. Please comment or ask questions about this or any of the videos I have. And please subscribe. And until next time, thank you. Have a great day and goodbye.